Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we have completed our discussion on axial skeleton. Let us now talk about the appendicular skeleton. So in appendicular skeleton, we will spend most of our time talking about the limb bones. So first let us talk about the upper limb bones. When I say upper limb bones, I mean the four limbs, our hands. So let us first talk about their, the bones present in the upper limbs. Now each upper limb is made up of 30 bones. So when I say that, I mean that each hand. So one hand is made up of 30 bones. Unbelievable, right? So 30 bones are present in each hand. So let us see what are those bones which make up each upper limb. So the first we'll, we'll talk about the upper limb part by part. So first we'll talk about the arm. When I say arm, I am actually talking about this portion. So this is the arm. So this portion is made up of, so th that is this portion, this is the arm. So this portion is made up of one long bone which is a single piece called humerus with a rounded head. So if you see this is one long bone. So this one is humerus and it has a rounded head. So if you see it has got a rounded head. The next part is the forearm that is this portion. This is forearm. What is it made up of? So here in this picture you can see it is made up of two bones. So here also you can see there are two bones present here. So what are those two bones? The first bone is radius. So one bone is radius and the other bone is ulna. So radius and ulna are the two bones which form the forearm. So which one is radius and which one is ulna? Radius is the lateral bone. And ulna is the medial bone. So where is radius? So this one is radius and this one is ulna. So these are the two bones which forms the forearm. So the proximal part of the radius articulates with humerus. That is this part, the beginning part of radius is connected to the humerus. Right? And what about the other part of the radius? The distal part is connected to the wrist bone. So here it is the wrist. So one side it is connected to humerus and the other side it is connected to the wrist bone. Whereas what happens for ulna? The beginning part of ulna starts from the elbow. So if you actually try to feel your hand, you will be able to see that there is one bone which starts from your elbow. You can press your elbow hard and you can just locate it. So that bone is ulna. But the bone which is present on the other side, on the lateral side of your arm, which is connected to the upper humerus bone, that is the radius. So these two bones form the forearm. Next portion is the wrist. So this portion is wrist. Now you have seen that you can move your wrist. So the wrist is movable due to the presence of bones in it. And each wrist bone has a very unique shape. Now what are the bones present in the wrist? There are eight short carpal bones. So these bones are called the carpal bones. So here you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here whatever bones you can see, they are the carpal bones. So the wrist bones are the carpal bones. Next is the palm. So this portion of the hand, that is palm. So basically palm is this portion and palm is made up of five long metacarpal bones. So these are the metacarpal. So if you observe it closely, these bones are quite long if you see. So they are long bones, five metacarpal bones, one for each finger. One of these connects to each finger. And then the last one that is the fingers and they are made up of long bones called phalanges. So these bones which you see in the finger, they are called phalanges. And how many phalanges are present in each finger? Now thumb has two phalanges whereas all other fingers has three phalanges. So that means if you see your thumb, there, is, there are two phalanges present. So you can see this is one and this is two. But for all other fingers, one, two, three. So for all others, three are present. So total how many bones are present in 
one arm or in one hand. So in arm you have one. So in arm you have one. In forearm you have two. In wrist you have eight. In palm you have five. And in fingers you have thumb has two. And all other fingers. That means four fingers have three phalanges each. So four threes are twelve. So that means total fourteen bones in the fingers. So if you add them up, one plus two, three plus eight, eleven plus five, sixteen plus fourteen. That is a total of thirty. So these thirty bones constitute each upper limb. So now let us look at the lower limb bones. Now in a very similar way we will talk about the lower limb bone. So we will talk about the legs. So in legs it is divided into different regions. The topmost region is called the thigh. So this portion is called thigh. Then the next portion that is this middle portion is the knee. And then you have the leg. So this portion is the leg. And then finally the last portion that is this portion is the foot. So we'll talk about each portion one by one. So let us start with thigh. So the thigh is again made up of one single bone which is called femur. So femur is the heaviest and strongest bone of the body. So please remember this. So you have the strongest. Where do you have the smallest bone? Just to recap. Absolutely, the ear ossicles. And where do you have the strongest and the heaviest one? It is the femur in your thigh. In knee, you have one cup-shaped bone which is called the patella, that is the kneecap. So here you have a covering on the knee that is called kneecap which is a bone and it is called patella. Next is the leg. Leg again has, it is very similar to the forearm and it has two bones. So one is tibia and the other one is fibula. So it is very similar to how you had radius and ulna. So this one is tibia and that is the median bone and this one is fibula and then finally the foot so in foot you have many different types of bones because the fingers will have phalanges so again fingers will have the thumb will have two phalanges other fingers will have three phalanges each so there will be total 14 phalanges for the fingers you have metatarsals which form the sole of the foot the, this portion so here you will have metatarsals which forms the sole of the foot, the bottom of the foot. And here you have the phalanges which forms the fingers. And you have tarsals or tarsal bones which form the heel and the ankle that is this portion. So this portion is made up of tarsals or tarsal bones. So these are the various bones. So here also if you add on all these bones you will get a total of 30. So these are the various bones which together form the appendicular skeleton. So this was about the limb bones. Now we will talk about the girdle. As I said, girdle are those parts of the body which connects the limbs to the axial skeleton. So girdles articulate upper and lower limbs with the axial skeleton. So these are the limbs. One, two, three, four. Now they need to be connected to the axial skeleton that is the skull, the uh, thoracic cavity, the sternum and the uh, vertebral column. So that is done by the girdle. Now there are two types of girdle. One is called pectoral girdle which articulates the upper limbs with the axial skeleton. That is called pectoral girdle. So pectoral girdle is present somewhere here which connects the hands with the axial skeleton. Then this pectoral girdles are very light and it allows a lot of flexible movements. So because of the presence of the pectoral girdle, pectoral girdle, the hands can be moved freely. So it allows free movement of the upper limbs. So let us look at the different parts of the pectoral girdle. So the other girdle which we know is the pelvic girdle. So pelvic girdle connects the lower limbs with the axial skeleton. So this was pectoral girdle and this portion. So somewhere here you will have the pelvic girdle which connects the lower limbs with the axial skeleton. So let us talk about the pectoral girdle. 
Pectoral girdle is made up of two bones that is clavicle and scapula. So what is clavicle? Clavicle is nothing but the collarbone. So this bone is called the clavicle. So here we have specifically shown the pectoral girdle, girdle portion. It is present here so that it can connect the hands to the axial skeleton. So this is clavicle which is also commonly called as collarbone. It is long and slender in structure as you can see from its shape. It articulates with scapula through acromion. So now this is clavicle and there is another portion called scapula. And where is scapula? This region is called scapula. This bone is called scapula. And clavicle is connected to the scapula. So this entire portion is scapula. So if you see, it connects to the scapula through acromion. So what is acromion? It is a ridge-like structure which connects scapula and clavicle. So somewhere here you have the acromion. So the region out here. The next part is scapula which are also called shoulder blades. So as I said, these are, this entire region is the scapula. It is a triangular flat bone. So if you see this has a triangular shape. Right? It is located in the dorsal part of thorax that is towards the back side of thorax. It articulates with the head of humerus of arm through the glenoid cavity. So if you see, this is the humerus bone which forms the upper arm. And this is the head of the humerus bone. Now this head is fitted into a socket-like structure or a depression in the uh, scapula. And this depression-like structure or this cavity kind of a structure is known as the glenoid cavity. So basically glenoid cavity is that cavity into which the head of the humerus fits in. So if you have a depression like this, let us suppose in a box you have a depression like this. Now if you take a ball and try to fit in, the ball will exactly fit in into the depression. So similar is the case here. So the glenoid cavity is a depression into which the head of the humerus exactly fits in. So that is the glenoid cavity. So this constitutes the pectoral girdle. girdle. So here you can see a triangular piece of bone that is scapula which has a depression so that humerus, head of humerus can fit in and which also connects with another bone called clavicle which is the collar bone. Now let us talk about the pelvic girdle. So when you talk about the pelvic girdle, as I said, it connects the lower limbs to the axial skeleton. It is made up of two coxal bones. Now what are coxal bones and where are they? So these are the coxal bones. So if you see, there are two coxal bones, one on this side and the other on the back side. So these two coxal bones form the pelvic girdle. And what is the coxal bones made up of? The coxal bone in turn is made up of ilium, ischium and pubis. So where is ilium? So this portion of the coxal bone is called ilium. The next part is the pubis. And where is the pubis? So this portion is the pubis. And the last portion is the ischium. And the ischium is this portion. So this entire thing is the coxal bone. So this coxal bones form the pelvic girdle. So thigh bones articulate with the pelvic girdle at a cavity called acetabulum. So if you see here like how the humerus or the arm bone, how it was connected to the cavity called the glenoid cavity. Similarly here also this femur that is the thigh bone is fit, it fits into a cavity which is called the acetabulum. So here you have the acetabulum. So here this cavity which is there. So this cavity is the acetabulum. So this is about the pelvic girdle. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.